Well, it's almost fall here in Oklahoma, which means Bermuda grass is gonna to start to die out. And Alex, Bermuda grass is a popular forage for a lot of Oklahoma producers, but there's a way to extend grazing in those fields. Yes, a common way to extend grazing on Bermuda grass pasture that's gonna to start to decrease in production from now and after go dormant would be interceding a cool season. And I would say wheat might be the most popular and a good candidate to be interceded. So we can extend those grazing days and have forage during the, the fall and also during the spring. Yeah, when we talk about wheat as a, as a grazing option, now's the, you know, typically the time where a lot of producers are gonna start planting. But as we know, you know, it's still kind of warm and Bermuda grass is likely to still, to still be growing. Does that impact that at all? Yes, that's, that's really impact because it's different to when you are making a sitting bed and you are placing your uh, wheat for grazing out or dual purpose right now. And when you are interceding that on a sod, as you can see here in Bermuda grass, uh, first, it's much harder to put the seed on the right place. And also, we still have the Bermuda grass growing. Uh, soil temperatures are higher than 65 Fahrenheit, air temperature higher than 75 Fahrenheit, and it's going to stay for some days. So the Bermuda grass also is going to be growing. So that's why it's very important if you are planning on interceding during the next weeks, first, graze the Bermuda grass pretty close to the ground or mow it pretty close to the ground and then even it's a good idea to go there and apply a contact herbicide such as Paraquat because this herbicide can knock down the Bermuda grass leaves and that will give an advantage for uh, the wheat in the next two, three weeks that when they are coming up and it's, it's, it's very delicate. Now, I just would say that because it's a common and recurring question. Some producers ask me, Alex, can I apply glyphosate? I would say, I would not apply glyphosate. Glyphosate is not a contact herbicide. Glyphosate is a systemic herbicide. So it's not gonna only kill the leaves of the Bermuda grass, but also it's gonna translocate and go to the rhizomes and roots underground. And that can have a kind of a long lasting uh, bad results and low uh, Bermuda grass regrowth coming in the next season. So, and then we need to, th to think about fertilization. Of course, soil, soil analysis prior to, it's very important to know how we are on pH, phosphorus and potassium. Uh, if your Bermuda grass is growing happy, I would say that per, probably your pH is good because Bermuda grass needs a pH of 5.8. We know that wheat can go even slightly lower than that. So perhaps your pH is good, but it's a good idea to check. Now, when you talk about phosphorus, uh, it's a good idea to inferral band phosphorus. So we are gonna have that phosphorus uh, available close to the seedling that start to develop those roots. And uh, potassium can be broadcasted. So there is a rule of thumb here that we say apply 30 to 40 pounds of actual nitrogen per acre for every 1,000 pounds of forage that you are expecting. So I would say that's pretty fair to expect like in a little conservative about 1,000 pounds during the fall uh, as forage and after, I would say, 2,000 pounds of forage uh, during the spring. I mean, I'm being very conservative here. Depending on the year, we can get more than that. So if that's the case, I would say that an application of uh, nitrogen uh, pretty much uh, during pre-planting to two weeks after planting during that time of 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre will be enough and after another application of the, in the same rate uh, during like mid-February when we see that we're gonna have more uh, uh, forage production is gonna be a good idea. Now, when you talk about time for grazing, uh, it's good that you wait that the wheat catch up at least at six inches of growth. And after that we have those six inches of growth, it's a good practice to go there, dig some plants out and take a look and see if you have a root system well developed so the plant can be very well anchored in the soil so when the cattle start to graze it's not pulling those plants out uh, ideally i would say wait a little more and start to graze when we have about 10 inches of growth but six inches is a good time so it's very difficult to say exactly the time on a day basis a month day basis because you know depending on the time that the producer is, is going there and planting and also how the weather is going. 
And again, the, the benefits of this is that you're extending that, that the grazing period in those fields up into the next spring to when that Bermuda grass comes back up and then it's kind of almost a year round cycle. Exactly right. So the, the, the main advantage here is that we are filling it up the fall and the spring with high quality forage because wheat can really provide that. Now, when we are getting like close to the mid spring, late spring is the time that we need to think about when to really terminate that wheat so the, the Bermuda grass cannot be affected and green up nice and dandy when we, we are talking about April, right? So the best way is terminate by grazing out. So you just let your cattle graze out or if you see that it's, it's being too much wheat, too much forage, uh, there is a good side of that, right? Because you're having good forage production, but also can affect our Bermuda grass that's coming. So perhaps mowing close to the ground or even an application on this time of glyphosate before the Bermuda grass green up comes, that would be a good practice so you can let the Bermuda grass freely grow when the green up comes. All right, thanks, Alex. Alex Roccatelli, Forage System Specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like a link to a fact sheet about sod seeding wheat, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.